Okay, let's go with We Fit. Okay, shout outs to Wendy and shout outs to a friend of mine whose name is Josh. Uh, we Fit's a 50 50 in my opinion. Uh, we can't really do much about down tilt because the character low, prior, low profile so much. So we're forced to double jump cancel Zare. Punish that all the time. And that move is really fast. Uh, this character can kind of just run on Earth and uphill to juggle us. Uh, header's annoying off stage. It's just free pressure for Wii Fit. Uh, falling Nair is annoying because the character pancakes. And we have to guess if the second it's going to come out or if the character is fishing for the combo hit. Uh, this character can just crouch under sh uh, short hop way bounce, peek at fire. This character's biggest weakness is mid range. But, like, this character has two tools that, m like, mitigate that. Or make it to where, like, if you're trying to pre play in that range against Wii Fit, she can make you, she or he can make you suffer. And that's, uh, Sun Salutation. Even though the character can't combo off of it, it's still a big projectile that does, like, one-fifth of a stock. It does 20 or over if it's even semi-charged. And then there's Deep Breathing. And Deep Breathing is crazy. With Deep Breathing, we're... With deep breathing, we just become a training dummy against this character. And all but cool movement we do with, like, double jump cancels air and, like, weaving, this character can just simply run in and cover half the stage quickly. And during this time, we cannot, we cannot lose neutral. Or we're going to take 50 in less than, like, 7 seconds. And deep breathing lasts for 12 seconds. And then, like, 12 seconds after deep breathing is gone... She can, she or he can threaten us with it again. So we can't just sit back and harass her with peak F fires. Or we can't just sit back and just like walk away in F tilt. Like we actually have to engage and play the game and get up close to Wii Fit. This character can like just go for up throws and juggles with up aerials. Up smash is intangible and really strong. Uh, F smash is strong. Uh, this character is already fairly mobile without it and is really evasive and hard to hit. So it's a matchup where we're both trying to use our hitboxes to hit each other and we can just play evasive and not get hit. But we're going to have to stop playing evasive sometime and actually pressure we fit because the character will like full hop, double jump, and then deep breathe. And then like we're a training dummy again. And it's just crazy. Like when deep breathing's active... We really can't, like, play the game normally. We literally have to just sit there and F tilt, and we have to react to everything the character is doing. Because the character controls the pace of the match when that happens. The character can, like, go off stage and edge guard kind of well, too, because forward air, back aerial is so strong. Header mix-ups. There's so many header mix-ups, it's not even funny. Uh, it's a matchup where we have to pressure her continuously, constantly. Or put her in positions where we can at least punish her for deep breathing. Or at least attempting to. Uh, thankfully though, we can we can make this character pay taxes a lot offstage with PK Thunder. With like offstage bear. Just be careful like head her offstage because it will kill you early if, you, if she gets the spike. Or do a lot of damage. Like 20 or 20, 25 somewhere like that. If you can hit with the hand and the ball. Thankfully we can do that against Wii Fit. But this matchup's a 50-50. Because those two people convince me, like, <laughs> yeah, so, 50-50. Uh, Duck Hunt. Shout out to Fobo, shout out to Josh. It's like, I played this matchup a lot in Smash Bros. Josh. Matchup is really obnoxious. Doesn't really use Duck Hunt that much anymore, but I fought Phobos. Uh, I think this matchup is either slight, slight, just very slightly Lucas favored. I haven't fought, like, a really, like, really crazy Duck Hunt, but this matchup is not, like, bad for Duck Hunt because Lowell can... Lowell Gunman. Those two things annoy Lucas so much if Duck Hunt is in positions to press buttons against us. Or he's poking our shields with like jab or back airs or neutral airs and we're stuck guessing. And Gunman's behind him and then like he's pressing the B button with can. We have to literally pick and choose what we're going to deal with. If we go for Zare, we're going to play the compact option that's not going to heavily punish Duck Hunt. We won't get hit by can or Gunman, but we're just not getting anything off of it. So Duck Hunt puts us in checkmate positions where we have to play that way. And if he reads it, he gets damage off of it. But this is also a matchup where like PKF Fire becomes something you kind of have to use to contest the sheer amount of projectiles on the stage. 
clay pigeons, maybe like if you're trying to punish your landing, can't to like reposition can because the burst will do it. Snipe gunmen and stop him from shooting you. So it's a matchup where because Duck Hunt can have all these assists on the stage, and they can all out neutral Lucas when used in unison together. It's a matchup where you have to learn a lot of the setups. And the character's ledge trapping is actually very strong against Lucas. He can keep us there for a long time. Actually, let me, let me just move this down. Let me move this down. We can get dunk cut, though. It's one of those matchups where we want him to be off stage as often as possible or ledge trap because PK Thunder forces him to pay a heck of a lot of taxes. We can go off stage and down air him freely, F tilt him freely, the two frame him, uh, near him off stage, and we can just force him to take a lot of damage. But he can force us to play, he controls the pace during neutral when he has a can out and if he's got setups going on with gunmen. He won't really kill us early unless he goes off stage and he makes a read. Or he gets like clay pigeon stuff. If he gets clay pigeon stuff, we take like 40 at least. Or we could take like 70 because Clay Pigeon into another Clay Pigeon and Clay Pigeon loops into another Clay Pigeon. And it's just bad. So yeah, damage output from Duck Hunt so good it manages to be 50-50. And then the projectile setups and all the assists on stage, he manages the muscle to a 50-50. Even though we should technically win. Slightly. Uh, let's go a Wolf. Shout out to JT Wild. Best Wolf I fought for a while. Uh. This matchup is a 50-50. Wolf's initial dash and airspeed make it to where he's better at playing the evasion and whip punish game during neutral. Or he's really good at playing that baiting game. But because his air acceleration isn't as good, Wolf is kind of forced to kind of move around like Roy or Crom, where he's kind of has to commit in one direction and then he has to like kind of like drift in that direction or don't move at all and then drift a little bit uh, we can stop him from just using blasters in neutral with magnet because it recovers like 15 I think 15% or like somewhere between 15 and like 18 PK fire also just eats up blaster so we can kind of just stop him from using it to condition us or dissuade him from using it to condition us. And we can trade with it well because it won't lose it won't have us losing stage control if we do manage to get it by as a blaster. And if he gets hit by our PK fire, he'll lose stage for that. Uh but then again, he can just uh reflect our PK fire and stop us from doing that too. Uh because the short up fast fall is really good like ours, he can play that mix up game really well, and so can we against him. And because both of our characters out of shield games are slow and we can like hit our shield, we can hit each other's shield and then dash back or walk back and make moves with out of shield. Or we can wait for the short hop to happen or wait for the movement to happen to catch it. It's literally a matchup of fundamentals. We can cheese each other. We can let trap each other. He gets double jump cancels air strain. We get juggled with like up aerial, forward aerials. And it's, it's very good. It, this is a very fundamental base matchup. We do have the better edge against him off stage because we can peek at Thunder as recovery and we can basically make it to where if he tries to side B quickly, we can punish him for that with peek at Thunder and we can kind of force him to use up B sometimes and we can two frame him and punish him for doing that too. He can let trap us really well though. That Nair is stupid. Uh, back air can catch our jumps. Forward air can catch us. Like down smash can kill us. But we can do the same thing again. Down smash can kill him. F tilt can kill him. So... It's just a matchup where we're both moving around, pressing safe buttons, using our frame data, negating each other's projectiles. It's very fun. This is one of the funnest matchups for Lucas, in my opinion. Uh, Pac-Man. Pac-Man's 50-50. Uh, Shout-outs to Bok Choy. Even though it was like a friendly, I do believe this matchup is 50-50 for varying reasons. So if Pac-Man sets up a hydrant... He can't really dissuade us from using PK Thunder, Zare, or like retreating fair, or PK Freeze to get rid of it. Or we can like up air it and it like goes really far up and then like it comes back down and we can use it as a pressure tool too. Or we can down tilt it, F tilt it, dash dag it. 
He can't really stop us from getting rid of Hydrant, so he ends up having the Charger's bonus fruit a lot less. Uh, he's floaty enough to where PK Fire and PK Freeze are really good at actually, like, stopping him from using, from charging bonus fruit easily. Because if he gets hit by PK Fire and Freeze, he loses stage control. Uh, he's slow enough to where both of these options actually end up doing work against him in neutral if he sets up a hydrant too. Because it forces him to jump and give up stage, or forces him to roll and stop charging, or forces him to shield. Because his ground speed's mediocre and his air speed's mediocre and he's floaty. We can pressure him with our projectiles. Rather well. We have the frame data to actually scrap and CQC with him too. And we can actually outkill him there. But actually gimping him off stage with a side B and stalling with up aerial and like hydrant and just side B's it has so many different angles to it. We'd have to up B preemptively to stop him, but he can just like release the side B and the armor through it and still grab the ledge. So we'd have to wait for him to either commit to the side B and then set up a two frame, or we have to wait for his position to be low so we can attempt to like peek at Thunder the trampoline and like or block him and make him trampoline over and over and over and over and over. Uh but a lot of that what I just talked about is very good for us. But if Pac-Man manages to like keep uh if he manages to get like certain bonus fruits and he manages to like win the CQC war and get stage control, he can box us into the corner. And we have to deal with hydrant bullcrap angles. Uh, he can go off stage and like back air us, forward air string us off stage, and hit us before we have a chance to use up B. Or he can set up uh, traps during ledge trap if we take more time to peek at them to back to the stage. He can't really juggle us because we can peek at fire, wave bounce, or B reverse weave away from him. But he can make it to where he'll get bonus fruit for that or position hydrant in an annoying position. Which can be annoying for us to deal with. Uh, if he manages to get like a Galaxian in his hand, we literally have to just like peek at fire, uh, play really lame and play really safe with like F-Tilt. Or just play safe, basically. Uh, if he gets Bell, we're small, so we're harder to hit. But again, when he gets Bell, he just uh, like tosses it, picks it up, and then he becomes one of the best defensive characters in the game. Because he can just wait for us. He, he can just wait. But on the flip side, if he's constantly waiting, that's our chance to F-tilt him, forward air him, zare him, peek at fire him. And he has anno he's annoyed by this. He's actually annoyed by this because we can stay out of his, uh, stay out of the range of it and just keep pressuring him. So because of our ability to pressure him because he's floating with our projectiles... And we can kind of force him to stop charging all the time. Or at least as safely. Because PK Freeze is something that you can't just parry. Because it has a it has five frames from the startup of like a grace period where you can shield. And no human is gonna react to that because you can release it from frame 40 to like 116. So he's gonna jump or like he's gonna do something. Or we can just peek at fire to pressure him to stop him from charging. Or make him do something else. And we can scrap with each other and screw each other up and gimp each other and let's chop one another. It's it's very good. It's very doable for Lucas. Uh, let's go with another one, Steve. Speaking of a character who sets up walls, this is like a more extreme version of Pac-Man. Steve sets up walls, sets up these block formations, and he's fishing the farm so he can get diamond tools. And diamond tools are obviously very strong. But even without that, Steve has good damage against. Like you can get like forty damage up tilt strings, like up till up till up till like up till make a block or up till up till up till jump make a block up smash. He gets good damage. He doesn't need he doesn't need the diamond, but having the diamond is obviously always beneficial. It's just that getting it is really slow for him because it takes like a minute or it takes a, a while for him to get it. Uh, this matchup ends up being 50-50 because despite the fact that Steve has more explosive damage than we do up close more consistently, we have better explosive factor in mid-range and our ability to weave in and out of that area. And then like we can mix up up close pressure with like down tilt or F tilt or like pivot grabs or like nares. And he can't really do anything about this because his out of shield while good, our pressure is just so safe on shield. 
He doesn't have the base mobility to really get around it either. And we can stop him from... We can annoy him while farming. Because we can like full hop Zare to break blocks. We can retreating forward air. We can PK freeze the blocks. We can PK fire the blocks. And we force him to use resources to get diamond. And the goal is to basically make him use resources to get diamonds. So when he has diamonds, we can keep pressuring him in mid-range with PK Fire and PK Freeze. He can't really punish those options either, even if they're fully staled, because his base mobility is paltry. He has to commit to a preemptive run-in to punish it. Because Cart has just enough startup to where like we can PK Fire it. PK Fire will always knock him out of Cart. Even if it's fully staled. PK Freeze will trade with Cart really well. If he jumps out of it. You will get grabbed, but he'll get frozen, and he'll just, like, have to wriggle out of the cage. The ice block. And we can just wriggle out of the, the cart. Uh, because of PK Freeze and PK Fire, we effectively can set up our own walls that he actually has trouble breaking past safely. And we can kind of do this in mid-range, too, because he's slow. His base mobility is slow. If we do manage to hit him, we can get good damage on him. And we can always put him in positions where we can always threaten his mid-range or we get sent away with like 4 there at 30. We can go for PK Fire and PK Freeze. And it actually is very good against him because his airspeed is slow. And if he makes a block, it forces him to jump off of the block or act immediately after making the block. We can get good pressure on him off stage too because even though his recovery is angleable, we can go off stage and narrow. We can force him to pay taxes or PK Thunder him. Yeah, he can use resources to, like, delay off the edge, and he can kind of plank a little bit. But against Lucas, no. If he tries to do that planking stuff, PK Freeze comes down at that angle where he, he'll just get hit and sent off the stage, so he has to come back to the stage. He can't just farm there forever, because we can just be content using it over and over and over. Uh, he has We have good ledge trapping against him. We can just F-tilt him, force him to get off the ledge. It is very ambiguous what option he's going to use, though. It's kind of like Game & Watch. It's very ambiguous. So I recommend you stay in roll distance, because there we can just... Again, we can just use PK Fire, we can use PK Freeze, we can just run in dash attack and hit him for left stalling. And we can kind of mix up like when we're in his face if we're going to F-Tilt, or if we're going to like fade away and get in mid-range. But Steve, if Steve manages to hit us, he will get a lot of damage. We can slow down his farming to a crawl with our mid-range options and projectile control. But sooner or later he will get he will get his items. We can also damage crafting table really easily because a lot of our moves just send really far off stage. So that's definitely something we want to do in the matchup too. This matchup is definitely uh, one of those matchups where sometimes we just have to use PK Fire and PK Freeze during neutral. Because they're really good against him. Don't be afraid to use it. And it's definitely a matchup you like. You need to understand because if this character gets you on ledge, he's got so many variable setups that can kill you. Be aware of blocks, setups, and like neutral too. So yeah, sometimes we have to freeze one, two, three, four, five times to get Steve to like actually like, hey, stop farming, come over here and interact with us, you know. So yeah, just don't be afraid to use those options. Also, we can use TNT against him. Like, if we, uh, we can kind of force him to, like, if he has TNT in a bad position, we can let him farm a little bit and get, like, a free 30% back, which does matter. But, yeah, Steve's 50-50. We have the space control options, the edge guarding, and, like, kill throws, and we, we have the tools to basically make Steve pay more than just in terms of resources if he's going to just commit to diamond farming. Or trying to get diamond. Uh, Snake. I think this matchup is like very, very slightly in Lucas' favor. I think Snake's damage output and ability to like put us in vortexes with down throw are too good. And Nikita off stage is still stupid. And let trapping against Lucas is still stupid. But because we can easily absorb grenades, we force Snake to play a vastly different game. And because our airspeed is really good, we can make it to where like he can't really like reliably punish our landings so he has to beat us in neutral now his neutral is really good because he's got insane frame data insane kill power on his tilts and he's definitely got the frame data to like match us and he can crouch under stuff and dash stack our landings if we're like not positioned well and uh 
we can't really abuse him off stage in the traditional sense because he'll just double jump and cipher and then we have to play the landing mix-up game and if we can play that game well we can get a lot of damage on snake snake also can't really get out of a lot of our combos with all that would like if we use down tilt and he just wants to hold grenade we can just go for f smash or and because he has a frame for air dodge we can just get f smashes around like 100 or 80 or 80 or 100 down tilt like f smash so like falling near one three down till F smash is really good against him, uh, but on the other hand, this character's ability to like reposition us easily with his throws or dash attack, it's really good to where like he'll put a C four down in a really powerful position, and then like he can have his grenade and obviously like if we read it and we can absorb both of them, we get a lot of health back. But if he reads us doing that, he can put us in very awful situations. That can lead to us dying earlier, having a lot of damage racked up against us. But overall, this is a matchup where, like, if Snake is, like, on a stage of triplats, we can just kind of feel free to, like, magnet wave bounce around him, PK fire wave bounce, be reverse around him when we get a lead. And he can't really chase us in the air to dissuade us from doing it. And because he can't use grenades safely to pressure us, and we get health back, it's very annoying for him to deal with. But his damage output is so high that it kind of doesn't matter. And Nikita edge guards and ledge traps with his all of his tools and him having the frame data to punish us for trying to magnet is, are so good that it ends up being like just very slightly our favor. Or if like snakes really optimize it more, it can be 50-50. So yeah, those are my thoughts on that. Uh, we only got a couple more left. All right, let's go with Pyra. I think Pyra is actually a 50-50 in my opinion. If you're just finding the character alone, every single time this character hits us, this character gets a boatload of stage control and does good damage to us. She can shield poke us on the second attempt with a hit. Uh, her up air is crazy. We can't land against that up aerial. At all. Despite the character being slow, like as fast as Zelda. While we can peek at fire Pyra, more neutral, because the character is slow and can't really punish it. We don't want to be cornered either. Like, we don't want to be constantly, like, we don't want to give this character middle stage with all of his range. And surprisingly decent frame data for the character's range and kill power. So, yeah, this character's F tilt is also stupid. This character's F tilt is, does so much work against Lucas, it's not even fair. Down tilt does the same thing, it's unreactable and sets up juggles and freaking, like, up airs, down tilt up airs, and stupid stuff like that. Uh, Punishing this character's landing is a matter of staying out of range and then bursting the character down or using well-placed PK fires or PK freezes. We can gimp this character really reliably because the character's slow in the air. And up B, Prominence Revolt, we can easily two-frame it or just go off stage and dare it and kill her. But obviously that would be the case if... Uh, where is she at? Uh, where is Pyra? I mean, where is Mithra, actually? Uh, Mithra, alright, let's just go with, uh, not here, okay, whatever. So, Pyra's in 50-50. Uh, Mithra is here. So both of them together is a minus one. Mithra is fast as crap. It's like, how would I compare it? It's like you're Kirby in Kirby and the Forgotten Land, and you're fighting Fecto Elphilus, and that creature is just hovering in the air, Dashing towards you, uh, Chaos Elfless is teleporting to you, swinging quickly, and you're just trying to dodge or get out of the way or find an opening. Mithra is so fast, we can't reliably peek at fire at all, even during advantage, because this character could foresight, fast fall, nyah, -uh, dash in and get a dash attack and get covers half the god dang stage or run in and get something off of it. This character is chic with a rapier. But unlike Sheik, we can actually like pressure this character off stage reliably with like fire, PK Thunder, PK Free. We can go off stage and just re like hit this character away. And if we manage to get a good read on this character at mid percent, when the character's off stage, the character can die. We can't reliably true frame the character though because up B is stupid. The first upper slash is so massive, and the character can like we we can't even down smash two frame that. Even with the third hit. 
So because of Mithra's quick speed, absurd sheet frame data, absurd range, and ability to just like nair us, because we can't really like if the character fast falls nair, like from a uh, short hop buffers fast fall nair one, and then like continues to go and cross us up and then fast fall, we can't parry the landing hitbox. So she just nairs us, juggles us freely. Uh, this character definitely controls the pace of the neutral. But if we if we manage to hit her. She gets double jump cancels it across the stage easily. She gets gimped easily. It's just that we have to play in a way where we're not going to get punished heavily. Because if she hits us, she may not do a lot of damage, but she can extend her advantage state so far. And then switch to Pyra or put Pyra in positions where Pyra has stage control. And we can't really abuse Pyra's weaknesses all that much. So, yeah. It's definitely a minus one for Lucas overall and both of them combined together. Also, while I'm at it, let me get some water. Mithra is like one of the only characters in the game or the only character in the game where Lucas cannot nair her at all. If you if we try short hop neutral airing her, she can just shield and spam spot dodge and it will all like nair one to three will always proc foresight or she'll just wait for an air four to come out and then it'll always proc so it's not even worth going for an air in this matchup but if we manage to touch her we get a lot of damage because she's a fast faller but yeah this match is minus one pyra myth is minus one careful the pyra down air too also if you get hit by a uh, if she if pyra manages to like side b you this character can footstool off of you and then force a 50-50 where she'll air dodge downward. And then you either roll, you tech, you, you roll backwards, you roll in, or you roll away. And if the character reads the roll away, the character can like shut up forward, down air, and loop it again. Or like down aerial in the up smash and kill. Or uh, read the roll in, or roll towards the center stage and drift, and then go for like another down aerial. Or if you like you just tech in place... The character can just down aerial there, so it's literally a guess. Which sucks, but it is what it is. But yeah, uh, Mithra's ability to just completely negate neutral against us is so good. So it's one of those matchups where we have to play an advantage state. A darn good one, too. Uh, Lucina is a 50-50. Unlike Marf, who can kind of play that low percent cheese game. Let me turn a fan on. Play that low that low percent like sour spot up till in the like sweet spot mix up cheese game. Lucina doesn't. She plays the the traditional nickel and dime game. It's very good because the characters' arcing hitboxes are good and they're consistent. So that means this character will just play the I'm gonna punish your landing because I have the range to do so. I'm gonna fight Lucas off axis, and I'm going to play that game a lot. I'm going to stand on the ground and down till pressure you because you can't do anything about it. And it works really well against Lucas. It works really well. And it makes the character's edge guarding or offstage edge guarding actually more threatening than Marps on average. Because the moves will just straight up kill. It doesn't have to worry about spacing them. She can just toss them out. But that also means the damage racking is worse. And that actually, in my opinion, makes the matchup more even than against Marp. Because Marp's damage racking can get ridiculous against us. And he still keeps the strong less trapping, and the less trapping actually ends up being better. Because he can just space his tipper moves against us when we're caught at ledge. And it matters. Because it'll kill us earlier. Lucina's not like that. For ledge trapping. So because of that, we have more chances to play neutral. And those extra chances to play neutral matter a lot. Because that means we're, we can actually abuse her more. We we're more likely to abuse her. At the percents where Marf tippers matter more. When we're cornered. And we can punish her F-tilts on the ground. If she uses F-tilt against us and we're grounded, we can fair out a shield that. Or like double jump cancels out a shield that if we're like perfect. Or for two frames. If we do it within two frames of like a short hop. Like frame six or seven. Somewhere around there. Uh... What else can I say about Lucina? Oh yeah, we can go off stage and we can attempt to like gimp Lucina and make them use a double jump with aerials, or we can zare the character off stage and push them away. Same thing with Marp too. 
But yeah, this matchup is like 50-50. Another fundamentals matchup where you're checked on how good you are at maneuvering around a character who has good range and great frame data on that range. So yeah, and how good you are dealing with pressure when the character wants to just use down tilt. It's pretty standard stuff. Uh, Pokemon Trainer is a 50-50, but we already covered all the Pokemon, so I'll just put them there. Uh, the Belmont, I believe this matchup is slightly in Lucas's favor. Well, I'll put it, I'll put it lower, actually. This matchup is very slightly in Lucas's favor. We have a lot of good offstage pressure against Belmonts with PK Thunder, and we can just kill them easily. And uh, during neutral, the character can't really just like use cross ignorantly to pressure us because we can zare it, we can PK fire it or F smash to reflect it. But he can use cross constantly to like set up situations where we have to do a cross and him at once. Uh, but it won't chip us down in neutral unless we've lost it. And we're trying to land. But uh, this character is F-Tilt. And back air and forward air. Are so good at stopping Lucas from doing mid-range stuff. That it's almost a 50-50. <laughs> we can't reliably just... Like, if we're in F-Tilt range, it's a trapping game. It's, a, it's like the, the Belmont trapping game staple. F tilts us if we jump back or don't move. F tilts us again. If we move, he moves back a little bit and he F tilts. Or he uh, jumps backwards and he swats us with that forward air or back air. Or he goes for a cross. And he forces us to Zare. He makes in some Nair, some dash attack. And character can actually hang with us in neutral somewhat. But he doesn't want to be anywhere close near us. If we manage to get close to him, it can suck. Because if he uses up behind his shield and he whiffs, which we have the distance to make it with, he can pay dearly for that. Uh, punishing the character's landings is definitely a little un more un unorthodox because his stall and fall sends him downwards at an angle and he low profiles. So it's definitely a little more a little more difficult, but we can alter our PK fires in a way where it can just not matter. And also, this character can just swat our PK fire attempts with like Zara or with like Fair and Bear or Cross. So, because of that, it's definitely a matchup where we're trying to get in on him. Or if he's back there just setting up too many crosses, we can kind of sneak a PK freeze in or a PK fire to kind of like annoy his projectile habits. Uh, if we get caught on the ledge, it's a blood fest. Uh, short hop Fair Angle downward can hit us. Same thing with Bear Angle downward can hit us. Uh, this character can just toss out axes to cover tethers, or uh, uh, holy water is also always a threat because if it hits us, we get comboed and we're forced like SDI quickly. If we get cut on ledge and he uses a uh, he uses the flame pillar, we really can't punish it because we'll be in a position where we'll, like weave away with it, or he'll like uh, hit us. He'll hit like the ledge where we're at, the part of the ledge where uh, the fire is over us, and we have to like. Let's drop magnet to absorb it to get rid of it. But it's still annoying. But we can let's trap him really well too, because again, uh we can just like set freezes, we can just F tilt him, or we can just pressure him off stage or do tether trumping and all that other stuff. So it's a matchup where we want to get in on him. We want to use our projectiles as a way to stop his projectiles from chipping us down or zero his projectiles, and then we want to get in on him. Cause if we don't, we're gonna get pressured to death. And when we do get on him, it can matter a lot more than a lot of the stuff he does in neutral unless he constantly plays it really well against us. And if he doesn't, it's obviously a 50-50. But if we can corner him and get him off stage, we give him so easily. It's just not even fair. So, yeah. Also, we, he really can't do much against us if we're directly above him unless he like goes for like a falling up aerial. So he kind of has to play the horizontal game like Min Min, but it's still an effective one, so... I'll give credit where credit's due.